It's about to get effing cool. Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, um, and Cool on our YouTube here. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm with Mason, uh, as I normally am, usually on anything video related. We have a very special guest with us today. Uh, we're going to be talking about a brand new comic book um, called Rogue Son from a guy who, uh, for a lot of you, is probably not brand new. In fact, we probably know him pretty well uh, if, since we all kind of follow the same stuff. Uh, we're joined by uh, Mr. Ryan Parrott. Sir, how are you today? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me on. That's a heck of an intro, by the way. That thing was pretty cool. <laughs> or it was effing cool is what I should have said. <laughs> hey, I totally ruined that. Yeah. Now, we're on, now we're on brand. Now we're going. Clip that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, Ryan, man, how you doing? How you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm good. It's uh, it's Friday, so that's good. So, uh, I'm looking forward to the weekend because uh, it's been a, it's been a long week. My dog decided to get all start. It's got really bitey for no particular reason. So we're gonna have to figure that out. But we're, I'm doing good otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds yeah, like my I'm, kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I got I got three three little kids, and yeah, one of them went through that biting stage oh. for a little bit. That was <laughs> that was that was fun. Um, but anyways. Ryan, you have a comic coming out pretty soon uh, in February, I believe. Uh, what is it? The 23rd? Uh, it actually might be moving to March 2nd now. Oh. But uh, yeah, with the paper supply issues, everything's a little up in the air. But I think right now it's, it's either February 23rd or March 2nd. It's going to be one of those two days. End of February, beginning of March. Either way, it's Rogue <laughs> Sun. It's Rogue Sun. Um, super excited about this book. Super excited to see uh, all the creative energy that you're going to have in this uh, in a creative owned book. Um, Really, really excited. But we have some questions that we wanted to ask you uh, coming up about this book and uh, just kind of take a peek inside your mind, see what see what's going on and uh, really drum up some hype for this because I'm really excited for this. Oh, thank you. Um, Fire away. Sure. So obviously, um, just looking at the previews and, and some of the interviews you've done prior, there's uh, quite a bit uh, of unpacking uh, with this upcoming book. Uh, I just want to say, like, it looks really, really awesome and everything I'm hearing about it just sounds really, really cool. Got to ask you, how much fun are you having? Because from from my perception, it looks like you were having a, a total. It looks like you were having more fun than I've seen anybody have in a long time. Oh well, I that's good. I'm faking it well. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no it's a lot of fun. Uh, doing a creator own book, I, I think just doing a book at Image alone is a dream come true. I've said this before, but like I was like 13 when Image came out, and I bought every single issue number one of that. I wanted to be a comic book artist because of Image, and so you know, even though that ultimately discovered that I didn't have the 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 skills to be able to pull that off, I somehow managed to get back into the writing of it all. And so like the idea that I could actually do an Image book when it hit me that I would be like the next generation of people who grew up on something and then can collaborate, like sort of like carry the, you know, carry the torch along was really cool. So like that part has been incredibly fun. Um, the part that's hard is, uh, is doing a creator own book. No one tells you how, like every book I've ever done before this has been with a company where I just like wrote the script and I handed it to my editor and then they got me the artist and we worked the whole thing out. And then they told me when the book came out, right? This one, you got to do it all by yourself. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> there's a thousand little things you don't know, but thankfully, you know, the nicest thing is Kyle Higgins, who's my, been my buddy since college and uh, is the the one I've been working with for so long. He's done this a few times. So he's been sort of holding my, holding my hand and carrying me along through. So that that's made it a little easier. Good. Yeah, um, no, that's, that's awesome, man. And uh, you know, we see in rogue son that it's not really your typical superhero uh, comic book because Dylan is not your typical superhero. So, you know, he's the heir a parent of the superpowers from his dad. So how do you balance the story with the story, the murder mystery aspect, and then also the hero's daddy issues coming into play? <laughs> I like that. I like that. That's, that's what I say. Uh, uh, probably all of my daddy issues are probably going in there. Exactly. Uh, Don't we all? Yeah, here we go. It's right. therapy session. Here we go. Right. Um, but yeah, like, um, you know, this is coming out as Supermassive, which is the other one shot that we have coming out in February, which is a crossover with Radiant Black. Um, and in that one, you actually see Marcus, the, the father who is uh, Rogue Son. So you get to actually get to meet him a little bit and know about him and obviously there's a little bit of a spoiler but not a big deal because it's in the first four pages i feel like that'll be known for people but <laughs> marcus dies in the first issue of rogue son and and when he does that his his son who's a sort of rebellious teenager um who's you know kind of grown up without a dad his dad left when he was two suddenly discovers he was a, his father was a superhero and sort of gets granted these superpowers um and i feel like that's the core of the story to me was about trying to find a character that i mean it's when you read it, um, like when you meet Dylan in the beginning, he's got a kid and he's pushing a kid in a locker. And I, I've said this in a few <laughs> interviews, but it's, it's something that I realized, which I liked, is that most superhero stories follow the kid in the locker. 
you know, that's the Peter Parker character. And so I wanted to do a book that actually follows the guy who put him in there. And who's that character? And how when you when he grant when he gets those powers, like what's it like to try and live up to the sh- in the shadow and up to the standards of someone that you hate? Like that's, that's the, that's balance of it all. And so, so the murder mystery part is more of a, is the sort of like, well, somebody killed my dad and I'm now taking this over. I should probably be careful and make sure that they don't come after me too. So it's a little bit of, of, of that, that balance. But yeah, I think the core of the story is really just trying to, I just like father son stories. Like, you know, I have a great relationship with my father. So if he hears this, like, you know, it's not, I'm not, I'm not projecting. <laughs> Your dad's just like, <laughs> he's like, what? what the heck, man? <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but I do, I think that that was the core of it for me was this idea of like, you know, what's it like to, how can you try to get, I think inherently almost all, all boys want that. They want their fathers to be proud of them. So how do you make someone proud of you when they're already dead? Like, how do you live up to that when you never get that? You can never get that, that sort of acceptance. So, yeah, I don't know if that answers the question, but that's sort of the broad way of looking at it. No. Yeah, that's great. I, uh, I, I like how you brought up about Dylan there with, he's the guy shoving the kid into the locker and all that. And I, I, I reading that, I was like, I was kind of taken back by that. I was like, Oh, is is something wrong here like what's what am i missing you know so i think that's a really cool aspect to look at it from that's uh that's going to make for a fun story and probably a lot of growth for him in that as well so that that was the goal was like i i you know i'm not saying anything crazy by saying i love breaking bad but that's what i like so much about that story is he, the character starts one way and then because you go starts as mr chips and becomes scarface right like i like the idea of i didn't like peter parker as a is a great character but he is the same morally but uh, he made one bad decision right he made that he didn't right, stop yeah. that that robber and ever since that morally he's made every right decision and for the most part and um he's i like the idea of taking somebody who has who doesn't have a strong moral compass and doesn't have that thing and being forced to help people ultimately will change because of that i like the idea of somebody who's forced to to someone who forces is forced to help somebody actually becoming a good person because of that so like i like the arc of that so i am a little nervous people are going to read that first that first book and be like i hate this guy and then throw it out but hopefully not we'll see <laughs> no i i mean i was <clears throat> immediately i i just so much gravity towards that that archetype just because you don't see that very often in comics like you said like every uh, not every, but a, a majority of the superheroes, especially like your big name superheroes, are you know they're a magical being or they're a, they're a Peter Parker uh, trope where you know it's it's uh, the kid in the locker becomes the superhero. So it's really fun and different and and, and just it, it makes me want to read more when the kid that's the bully becomes the superhero because that's not supposed to happen. It's right. supposed to be the other way around. Yeah. So no, definitely. Um, I do have one like question that's just kind of like it's a, you know like it just sits there and kind of rings at you a little bit. Um, and this may be just a minor thing, but but why New Orleans? Why set um, the story in New Orleans? Well, two reasons. One, um, I so my wife is a writer on was a writer on Preacher, the TV show. Okay. Yeah. And so they were shooting down there. And so when I was writing, uh, actually before she was my wife, she's my girlfriend, my girlfriend at the time. She uh, was like, do you want to come down and spend two weeks down here? You can write, you know, anywhere. So why don't you come write New Orleans while uh, we shoot here? And I'll be at set on the set all day, but you can just work. So I was I went to New Orleans for two weeks and just wandered the city. And I and I fell in love with it. I loved every element of it. Um, and I ended up proposing to her in Abaddon Park right there. And nice. so she's so. So, so I met my so my wife that that's going to be like our place we go back to every year. But um, that's the first reason. And the second reason is it's just the thing that I love about New Orleans is it already has sort of these like undertones of sort of the supernatural and sort of like the like this older thing. You know, the, the, there's a ghost tours everywhere. The, the 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 gothic architecture is already sort of ingrained. You see a, a New Orleans building, you know what it looks like. Yeah. Um, the voodoo element. There's just a lot. Also, I think the fact that it's below sea level and you have all of the above level graves, like it just gives everything this very kind of like not creepy because it's not a creepy town it's party town but like it has this like right on the it's like it's like party town in the middle and then on all of the fringes there's all this history and all the sort of this this like old gothic feel and it just has an undertones i thought if you're gonna have a superhero that sort of battles the forces of supernatural new orleans seems like the perfect place to do it heck yeah yeah that's really cool would you say that kind of influenced the design of the character himself that type of gothic medieval type look a little bit i think it definitely i mean you'd have to ask abel that more because i i've said this before but i'll tell you like when i told one night when he came on board i sent he read the outline that i was thinking we didn't have the character we had the name but we didn't have anything and he's like so what do you think he looks like and i was like i don't know i think maybe he's like a knight that's on fire and and he, <laughs> and he literally was like i gotcha and he sent me one drawing and that's the drawing of the character 
And I think I was like, can we add a little more fire? Can it like, can the fire come out of the seams? Cause like, <laughs> I like, I love like a ghost rider effect. And then he's like, gotcha. And he like, ramped the fire up like 40%. And that was, nice. that's the character. So like, I think it, it like, he nailed it. And I, he did a lot of research about from New Orleans. Like just looking at that area. He's very aware of that. Cause I told him, I was like, let's not just say it's New Orleans and make it look like every other city. Let's actually use some of the architecture. And so he's been pretty, pretty on that. So I'm assuming that he, I'll, I'll say that he did the research for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and- and speaking of Abel, uh, his artwork is absolutely incredible. Um, how exciting is it to have Abel working on the book? And how much fun are you having every time you get a finished page? And even not a finished page, just any page of progress of artwork from Abel on this book. I mean, he's awesome. I, I I think look, every every writer comes on every podcast and tells how awesome their artist yeah. is. Um, but I'm 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 actually telling you the truth. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, but like he's awesome and he's got like this Sean Murphy's mixed with Dan Mora kind of like like you look at his stuff and like I just I didn't even really something I wasn't ready to make a book and then Kyle I was like that was the one thing I was like I just gotta find the right artist I don't I wanna you know who do you th- I, I couldn't find him and Kyle's like I got a guy for you and he just sent me that his 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 like his pages and I was like this guy's incredible like he's not doing anything like no one else has him he's like no he'd love to do it and I was like wow so like his pages are incredible in the sense that like I really think he has a really good understanding of of both panel orientation and also uh, page composition like mm-hmm. you look at the page and it's like if he under he takes both into account and i really love that um and like there's so much energy in the way that he draws and like i don't have to i don't give him any notes like it's i know that sounds like i'm not doing my job but like <laughs> I, I i get the pages and i'm like these are great like yeah. keep going <laughs> like it's, it's, it's a, and that honestly when you can find an artist where you aren't giving any notes because they just they can read your mind like that is the best relationship you could ever have on a book yeah, no, I agree. That's this book book is so visually stunning yeah. and everything's just so well put together. And one thing I've noticed about a lot of your writings is I've spied a Becca Carey lettering in a lot of those. <laughs> how, how do you ever give her a break or is uh is she just going 24 7 for you there oh she, she's busy yeah like she the thing that i think is cool about becca is you'll you'll get her like lettering he'll give her like i remember when we first were sitting down for like the first four pages she would be like hey i've got some options and she sent me like a like four options but i didn't see the other four i just saw the first one because they were like hidden and i was like these are perfect and she's like what, what, what's what your perfect? I'm like, the first one, like, or the, this one. She's like, oh, there's more? <laughs> I'm like, oh, and I looked at them, and they were all perfect, but they were all, like, slightly different, and I was just like, oh, my gosh, like, there was just, like, they all were good. Like, I just had to pick the the one, and I, I realized what was so cool was she was setting the tone. She, like, the the letter, or like, I'll say this about Chris O'Halloran, too, without jumping ahead a little bit, but, like, your letterer and your colorist set the tone for your book in the same way that I think music sets the tone for a movie. Like they, yeah. it's like, it, like you can have the book, it's there. And then when they come in, they add in that finishing polish. They, they make it like, like they just, they find now the way people speak, the way that they talk, the, where it all orients, like it does, it really does set a tone. And like, that's something that I don't think I really ever really appreciated until like I was only doing my own book and I had to make all the decisions myself. Usually the editors were like, you know, working with them. And so I would see the final version, but now I actually have to make a lot of decisions and that's, you know, it's not as scary when you've got really talented people around you. Yeah, no, I, I think that is a really great point that how important the letterer is because, you know, it's the, the reader essentially developing the voice in their head and you're trying to lead them in a direction. I think you, in all your books, you do a really great job of that. Oh, thanks. Now, going back to the inside the book a little bit, um, I love, I love the design. Again, we talk about the design of Rogue Knight or Rogue Sun, excuse me, Rogue Sun. Um, with the night feels, I got night on the brain right now, but also the fact, you know, he's on fire. I think that's just really, really awesome. Um, but now every superhero needs some super villain, super villains, excuse me. Are there any teasers you can give us about any of the, uh, the bad guys that rogue Sun's going to fight? And is there any chance that a, a superhero made of fire, uh, is ever going to go up against a super villain made of ice? Oh, well, that, I, got, I got throw it out there. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I mean, wouldn't be doing my job properly if we didn't have some sort of sort of, uh, you know, a tale of fire and ice, basically. Right. Uh, no, that's what we get. Oh, but there you go. Now I'm, I'm getting it all together. We're doing that. you're doing um, some. I, I okay. love rogues galleries. I think I, for my time on GoGo, that was the, the number one thing that I, the, the Power Rangers, that was the number one thing that I wanted to start doing was like, I was like, I don't want to just do Zed and read 
Rita. I'd love to bring in some other people. Like I like I I feel like that's what makes like Batman and Spider Man like who they are is that they have these incredible great rogues galleries. Yeah. And so that's the goal is to try and make yours as well. And so like in the first like three or four issues, I literally just each issue is like a new bad guy because I just want to start and I have something that we set up in the third issue. I can kind of tease it, I guess, a little bit. So I it's my own supernatural version of of uh, Arkham Asylum. And oh, nice. but it's not where you think it would be and it's not how you would think it would be. And and I don't want to say it too much because it's like it's when we came up with it, I was like, oh, my gosh, that's exactly if you see the cover for the third issue, you might under you might get an idea think, of what I think that cover was shown today. So. OK, yeah. So, yeah, um, that, I don't want to spoil any more of that, but that, that if you yeah. look at that cover, you'll have an idea of what we're going for. But yeah, like I think that's the fun is like I like to try. There's a the idea is that Rogue Sun sort of fights the, the like force of the supernatural. So I've been sort of riffing off some of the traditional tropes like in the second issue. We have a guy named uh, Blood Moon who's basically a com. And it's not the I'm not the first one to do this, but I thought it was fun with the idea of like the off. He's part of a, a clan of vampires and werewolves, and so he's a but flying nice. werewolf, which I thought yeah. was fun. He's got a you know like a brand on his stuff, and his name's Billy Blood Moon, and his whole family's a bunch of sort of like redneck crazy guys. And I like, I like that. I like I like that thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then we have Demonica, who's going to be in the third one uh, in the third issue, and she's uh, like uh, and she's got some fun stuff. So like it's just like kind of these riffs on on sort of like. Like, I'm going to say punk rock version of the supernatural characters, but there's definitely that kind of vibe that we're going for. But yeah. hopefully, you know, there's there's I will say this. Not everything is as it seems when it comes to who our villains are and where they come from. I guess that's the best way I can say it. It's a, that, that's the cryptic way I can answer that. I have a bigger plan in, 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 in mind, I guess. Great. No, I mean, yeah. knowing your work on, on Power Rangers over the years, like I'm excited. Like, let's okay, let's, let's go. Let's uh <laughs> Let's. I mean, issue three is what potentially June, but still, let's go. I mean, I'll. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be a I, long want a Billy, wait, man. I want a Billy Blood Moon spinoff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Billy Blood shot. Moon. Yeah, <laughs> I love alliteration for bad guy names. You just got to yeah. do that. Like, yeah, it just rolls off the tongue. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good stuff. So, if I'm getting it right, Supermassive is coming out a week before Rogue Sun. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Okay. So, with all of that, I kind of want to just clarify the timeline of these two books if you know what you can share without spoiling too much about how the timeline works out between uh supermassive and rogue sun yeah so radiant black comes out so this so so supermassive is a combination like a crossover between radiant black rogue sun and infernal Girl red uh infernal Girl red that storyline uh you is that's from a kickstarter from last year with matt matt groom um who i'll plug is taking over mighty morphin from me which just fyi i'm assuming people know that but i'm gonna tell you anyways he's gonna oh, do yeah. a great job i've read his first two issues he's doing awesome um but uh so anybody who's sort of just the power ranger people they're like oh well there's a reason i came on this you know, i got something uh but, but uh um so that will be out i think coming out this year but uh that story uh is right before um super massive and radiant black 12 i think is right is the comes out the week before super massive so both of those will lead into the event then our event happens a week later rogue sun happens so super massive happens right before so if you read super massive you can go right into rogue sun and it will all follow linearly which is nice for a change because if you have read my power rangers you know we bounce around a lot <laughs> you don't like to make it easy for anybody yeah yeah that's why i wanted to ask that's was oh, good question so kind of gives the uh Kind of gives that, uh, you know, some clarity to how, which order to read it and how how it all work out. So, um, so yeah, I mean, we see uh, Image is billing Rogue Sun alongside Radiant Black as an example of the future of Image Comics. So no pressure there, right? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> you got this. You got this. No, no yeah. worries. No worries. Um, Ryan, you've been writing comics. Um, for many years now, right? Um, yeah. So as, as you begin this journey with your creator own book with Image, what are some of the lessons you've learned in writing comics um, just over the years? Oh, gosh, that's a good question. Um, what are the lessons I've learned? Um, you know, I learned a really valuable lesson with Go Go Power Rangers that I, in the sense that like, I remember it. So like the way I got that book was like, I'd been working on some stuff. I knew Daphna Plebin because I was on a, she's the editor of Power Rangers. She was um, on a panel that I did. So we met and got like, I did a panel and then afterwards we like got drinks and she, we got in an argument about, you know, w whether or not the ending of Winter Soldier was good or not. And she just, <laughs> she just schooled me and uh, on that particular area. Um, but we, I think that's where we became friends. And she, when she brought me Go-Go, she was like, I was like, 
I was like, okay, that'd be fun. And she's like, but I want it to be 70% like daily life stuff and like 30% monsters. And I was like, well, that'll be tough. But then when I started writing it, I realized that's actually the part that I liked the most because what it forced me to do was to figure out stuff, like pull stuff from my own life. Like I, that story, the pitch I had for that book was, you know, what if there wasn't uh, what if there was a sixth friend that you didn't know about, that there was a friend that was originally part of that group and then they got split off and stuff. But I, what I, I the, the, the lesson I learned from that was, um, the more you can put, the more you actually have something to say with your books, the better. And I know everybody says that you gotta have something to say, but the point is, it's like, once you, once you figure out what the point of your stories are, then all of the cool elements that come from a comic book start to support that. Um, like what I realized that like just to sort of like with Rogue Son, like when I realized I wanted to tell a story about sort of a, a rough and t- like a, a rebellious kid who who was trying to sort of like get the the the, the validation of his, pe- his father. Then I realized like all of the villains he's going to face need start to support that theme. And so it, it starts to, I think the hardest thing when you start to write is you have so many options, right? You have a, mm-hmm. you have everything you, you're, you can have, you have a thousand stories that can go in a thousand different directions. When you figure out what you want your, the point of your story to be, it starts to cut off the other options and then it takes the ones that you pick and it allows you to find nuance. It allows you to, to, to avoid some of the cliches because it's the, the theme will basically say, no, no, don't go that way because that's what everybody goes. And so I don't, that's yeah. a little broad, but like, that's what I've learned a little bit is like find the thing that you want to write about that's not – even if it's in genre, it, that's not genre. You, you know, like Jaw, yeah. like the movie Jaws is about a shark, but it's really more about a, a father trying to take care of his kids and connect with his children, right? Like there's like yeah. there's there's subcurrents to all that stuff. And like I feel like once you figure out those things that you like and you care about – um, they will inform on your writing and really make it personal and really help. And I think, you know, Kyle's done that really well. I think with Radiant Black, I'm trying to do that really, I'm trying to do that with Rogue Son. And I've, and I've really tried to do, I mean, I'm really enough Power Rangers for as long as I've been in it now, it's, it's crazy that it ended up being like this weird story about growing up. Like each one of my, like Gogo is, is, was high school. Uh, necessary evil or was was uh, going to college uh and then unlimited un- unlimited power was is once you get out of college and then the next thing and then the uh, uh the one i'm doing after this is is more like what's it like to when you're no longer a kid like it's like so like all this stuff it's just, i'm literally writing like the light of my entire life but empowering the chapters <laughs> But that's what a helpful is like, I'm telling you about my life in the book. I'm not just telling you stories about, you know, kids, uh, you know, kids, teenagers attitude. So, yeah, no, that's really awesome. It's really cool to see the, uh, the development over this whole entire, that, that whole entire series. Well, yeah. I mean, look at, look at like the character, Matt, right? Yeah. The yeah. sixth friend, uh, go back as someone who read and we're shifting to power Rangers for a second here, but someone who who's read every book you've done with the power Rangers brand starting with go, go one to where we are today. Like if you would have told me what three four <laughs> years ago when all that started that that's where that character would end up, I would have been like nah. Um, and if I you think told that, me that, I would have said nah. So <laughs> yeah, I was about to say I think that, just that's, from that's listening to the you thing that gets on. like uh, I love a great story. Like artwork is important too, but I love a great story. Uh, it's it's something that's always attracted me to Kyle's books because Kyle always has great stories and Ryan. It's something that attracts me to your books. You always tell a great story. That's why I'm so excited about Rogue Son. I'm hoping that everybody gives this book a chance. Um, because you're you're a great narrative storyteller. Like I'm, I'm super excited to see what you can come up with and what you're going to do and and how you're going to potentially twist daggers now. You know here and there and and you know get the waterworks going and make us sad, make us angry. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Great. Cool. Hope hopefully hopefully it'll work out. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it seems like it's going to be a really fun ride. So, uh, all right. So for everyone watching this, dreaming to write comic books one day, what's your one piece of advice you would give them? Uh, find people, uh, it doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter where you are. Find people that also want to make comic books. Like go, if it means do it on, if you do it online on Reddit, if you find it on discord, uh, go, uh, to your comic book store. If you, it, you don't have, to, I know everybody thinks, oh, you have to live in LA. You have to live in New York to be able to do these things. You don't. And, but the key is find people that, that want to do it too. And then work together, work together and help each other for free, help each other. Like when I say help each other, I mean like you break story together and you, you find artists for each other and you just do that. Cause I feel like that's what networking really is. It's finding a group of friends that all want to do the same things and you work together. And then hopefully if you're all working and helping each other, some people will go up, some people will go down. And then you'll eventually, if, if it all works out, they'll end up helping you. Like I, I heard this really great analogy, which is like people think networking is making something great and then 
and and then reaching and you're in a big pit of people, right? You make something great and then you reach up and someone pulls you up to the next level. That's not what happens. Networking is you're in the pit with everybody else and you build a ladder and you all go up the ladder one by one by one. Like yeah. that's that's how actual networking works. So I would say that's what we're in any industry I've worked in networking. It's, it's a very daunting thing. Cause I know a lot of people, I'm not a particularly outgoing person. I don't, I'm not a great schmoozer. I don't know everybody. I'm terrible with names. Um, but like, I do love working with other creatives and I'd love sitting around and talking story and I'd love coming up with stuff like that's the, that's what I do it for. And that's, what's fun. And I feel like that's what fans do too. Cause we go to, you know, we go to comic stores and yeah. we have debates about Boba Fett for three hours. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that's what writing comics yeah. is though. It's so it's just doing that in a constructive, an instructive way. So that would be my, my advice. If you want to do it, find people out there that also want to do it at the same level and help each other. And that's what, that's what, how you're going to get your break. Yeah, well, it seems like you guys are having a lot of fun just from everything we've seen coming out about this whole super massive event and the Radiant Black universe you guys are all building there. So I definitely look forward to all of the content coming and um, looking out for just anything in general you guys are putting yeah. out regarding yeah. this. It seems, seems party, like a lot of fun. Party starts February 16th with super massive and then continues either February 23rd or March 2nd. Yeah. T TBA to be announced. Um, and I, I'm sure we're going to get a lot more uh, promotional stuff as we get closer to the date. Um, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, it, I think you've created something awesome. I love the design of the character. Like, that's the first thing I noticed. Like, the very first super massive image I ever saw, I was like, what is that? Who is that? <laughs> I know the other two. Who is that? What is that? Yeah. Who's the night guy? Yeah. And, like, the and I was the Kyle's like, oh, that, that's, that's Ryan's character. like, Let's go. Okay. Right. I'm ready. Yeah. Go. <laughs> no, it's been, it's been a lot of fun and I'm, thank you guys for taking the time to talk to me about it. It's a, it's a, always scary when you create a new book. Cause when you have to leave sort of the, the, the safe, warm embrace of power Rangers <laughs> and bring in something new, there's a lot of options out there. So it's, it's, you, you know, I owe it to hopefully make something that is, you know, you know, it, everybody, if you want to go read a superhero book, there's plenty out there that, that you can enjoy. So we'll have to find something that will hopefully subvert that and, and hopefully builds off a lot of stuff that I've learned. So thank you. I appreciate it. All right, thank, thank you so much for coming on and for uh, doing this interview. And, and I can tell anyone watching this video, don't worry. Uh, this is a great book. You're going to love it. I just, we just need to figure out the exact release date and we'll go from there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much. We really appreciate having you on and we'd love to have you on in the future to talk more. Sounds great. Thanks for listening. For more great content, check us out at effincool.com.